Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome to Spirit Speakeasy. I'm Joy Giovanni, joyful medium. I'm a working psychic medium, energy healer, and spiritual gifts mentor. This podcast is like a seat at the table in a secret club, but with mediums, mystics, and the spiritual luminaries of our time. So come behind the velvet ropes with me and see inside my world as I chat insider style with profoundly gifted souls. We go deep, share juicy stories, laugh a lot, and it wouldn't be a speakeasy without great insider secrets and tips. You might even learn that you have some gifts of your own. So step inside the spirit speakeasy. Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome to Spirit Speakeasy. I am joyful medium, Joy Giovanni, and in this podcast, you will get an insider view into the spiritual gifts and stories of mediums, mystics, and the luminaries of our time. So come behind the velvet ropes with me now for Spirit Speakeasy. In today's episode, I just want to give you a little introduction to this podcast and the premise, why I started it, and some understanding into me, a little introduction to me as well. Uh, So some things to know. I am a, a medium, a mentor, and a lifelong spiritual seeker myself, and I created this podcast to have real conversations with other spiritually gifted individuals of our time. Uh, So I'm so excited because in this podcast, we'll really lift the veil on all things from mediumship to psychic phenomena and psychic self-care and so much more. And one thing you should know about me is that I am a real talk Italian girl from Boston. So you know, I've got questions. (laughs) Just think of me as your psychic bestie and spirit world tour guide. You can expect to be touched at a soul level, get some spirit tingles, and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about me today. Um, I did write my story out a little bit just so I have an outline to work from. And if you guys have questions, you can reach out to me through my website, joyfulmedium.com. And ask any questions that you have, and I can answer them in future podcasts. You can also feel free to suggest guests. I've got a long list of my own that I'm hoping to talk to, but if you have guests that you want to hear from as well, I'm happy to uh, reach out to them so that this podcast can really become a community and you can be getting what you need as far as understanding about mediumship, spirit world, psychic phenomena, uh, all the things, right? So you might be asking yourself, you know, who is this girl? What, where was she before this? And what gives her the authority or knowledge to talk about this? So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about myself. Again, my name's Joy Giovanni. Uh, I was best known in my acting career for a short time in a role as a WWE diva by my own name, Joy Giovanni. Um, But that's just the tip of the iceberg. So there I was seemingly on top of the world as a WWE diva, right? For some people, this would be the height of their career. I was on TV every week in front of millions of people. And I was a part of the main event match every week. Uh, Basically, the reason they were fighting was usually over me, someone kidnapped me or, you know, was doing something to me to get a rise to create the storyline for the main event. I even got to be a part of the video game, which was really cool. Um, So on the outside, my life looked like everything was in order and like I was living the dream, right? But in my heart, I still wanted to be pursuing my true dream of the time, which was film and television. And what no one knew was that I had two beautiful small children, you know, at that time as an actor, um, especially someone who hadn't like broken into the scene yet. It just wasn't considered favorable to also be a mom. Hopefully that's changing in our world. But at the time, nobody knew that I had two small kids who were three and five. And actually the truth is my marriage was failing. I had this enormous financial pressure to support my kids, my husband, and also my own mom. 
and there were houses and cars and bills, and I was drowning. I felt like I needed to be the version of myself that everyone else needed or wanted me to be. And so I put on a happy face and got out there, but inside I felt small and lonely and inauthentic. Um, And then it came crashing down. I lost my TV contract with WWE um, in a big uh, company release. They released 50 talent is what they're called, quote unquote talent. Um, So I was released, you know, from my contract and not long after my marriage imploded. Shortly thereafter, I lost my house. And when all the money was gone, my mom left my life again, which was a pattern with her. And I felt so powerless in just about every way. And in some in some, um, you know, at some point in all of that need to please, I lost myself. And feeling alone in all of this, I tried, you know, therapy and I tried um, reaching out in any way that I could. And it just wasn't working for me. Uh, so I really felt like, you know, for me at that time, the therapy that I was doing, and, and uh, you'll hear me say a lot of times over our time together that I do believe in therapy. And I think it's great for a lot of people. It's just at that time in my life, it wasn't giving me what I needed. It felt like a lot of talking about my trauma with no action. Uh, and I'm a person of action. So it just didn't feel helpful to me. Um, So I worked through lots of self-help books and workbooks and journaled my little heart out, but something was still missing. Uh, I'd always had an interest in all types of wellness. And along the way, even before acting, I had become a licensed massage therapist and was building my own practice. Um, So I had gone back to that after my TV contract timed out. Uh, or, uh, you know, I was canceled basically <laughs> over several other people. Uh, so I went back to wellness. It just made sense with my life at the time. And I had moved from LA to San Diego during that time period, which is where I am now, and decided as a totally separate business to start an ice cream truck with a good friend at the time, which I know sounds a little bit crazy. Um, but I just knew I needed my own business if I was going to totally step away from acting and into wellness and was trying to find other ways to make it work, right? So while I was building my own practice and driving this ice cream truck, I had always been curious about something called Reiki, which is a a Japanese form of energy healing. And somehow it seemed like I magically called forward my first mentor. I actually met her in a completely quote unquote random uh, chance encounter while I was driving this ice cream truck. And I would privately mentor under this incredible soul, this beautiful woman for about three years after that. She told me for the first time that I was psychic and a powerful healer. And I told her she was crazy (laughs) because I didn't believe in, in really any of that at the time. And I didn't understand exactly what it meant. I had a lot of, like most of us, you know, a lot of my understanding from TV shows and movies and media, which is very different than what this spiritual work actually is, I would come to learn. And you know, she was the first one who let me know that the colors I could see inside my eyes when I'd close them or around people that not everyone sees that I didn't realize not everyone sees that. And she helped me understand that I could feel energy in my body. And I learned Reiki, which is this healing modality that I was telling you about, I learned all about chakras and energy and auras. And I even started learning how to use my own gifts, my own sensing to do intuitive or psychic readings. Um, And with every new tool that I learned, I did my own experiments and created case studies and played with the tools in all kinds of ways and studied and practiced my little heart out in whatever I felt pulled towards. So I ended up really steeping myself in an education, not just about healing, but I also learned about spirit guides and tarot cards and crystals and signs and even trance mediumship, which we'll talk much more about over the course of this podcast. Uh, I practice each one of these in every way that I could come up with. And with each new tool or technique that I picked up along the way, it really felt like I had called it to myself, like some sort of mystical breadcrumb along this journey back to myself, really. Like I was collecting missing pieces to my own puzzle and my senses were 
still unfolding and heightening. And I was working as a healer, you know, as part of my massage practice, I was also doing these healing sessions and getting little bits of messages and guidance for people from their guides and from their own soul, their own energy. But imagine my surprise when during these healing sessions, I started to become aware of people's loved ones that had crossed over, you know, their dearly departed loved ones from the spirit world. I wasn't scared, but I was kind of shocked. And so at that point, I decided that I really needed to seek out some more mentors to understand more about these gifts of mediumship. And that's exactly what I did. It's an interesting thing. Even when we have these gifts, these gifts are a natural part of us. Everyone is psychic or intuitive to some degree. It's that gut feeling. Um, Often, you know, how some people can identify it is if you've ever been in a meeting of any kind and uh, you've heard someone say like, oh, there's really good energy in that meeting. That's intuitive sensing or psychic sensing. It's just we don't think about it like that. So these are the sort of things we're going to be diving into in our time together. But for me, I was just so intrigued by this gift of mediumship. I thought it was really incredible. It was something I didn't intend for and didn't ask for, but just something that started happening as a natural part of me. So I continued to train. I'm actually quite a firm believer in education, so I stay in active mentorship even now. Um, It's been several years. I want to say since I've been actively working with the mediumship gifts, you know, I trained, like I said, in trance mediumship, which is going into a deeper meditative state and connecting with spirit in a different way. But For several years now, I've been a working psychic medium where I see clients in my office in San Diego, as well as virtually via Zoom. I teach healers now in uh, energetic tools like I was taught. But the mediumship, I just love so much because there's something amazing, beautiful, special, um, you know, an infinite number of adjectives around it to be able to sit with someone that I've never met, that I don't know, and connect, communicate communicate with their loved ones in the spirit world to let my clients know that their loved ones are safe and at peace and still with them just in a different way, that the love that they share still allows them to connect. And the type of mediumship that I practice is called evidential mediumship, which really just means that when loved ones communicate from the spirit world, from the other side, that I like them to share specific details about who they were in the physical world in this life so that their loved one, who's my client in my office or on my Zoom screen, can recognize them. So they will often share details about um, memories that you shared with them, for example. Some spirit people will make their love their love really clear or their personality really clear. Um, some will talk about their passing and some won't. So in my sessions, I'm really just trying to honor where the spirit people want to go and follow them and give the information, the details, the messages that they want in the way that they want to express it to validate for their loved ones who are here in the physical world, still my clients. So there's really something incredible about being able to bring mediumship forward in that way. Um, And just so you know, in case you were wondering, it's not just people that can communicate. It's also our pets because pets often are just as big of a part of our family as the people in it. And they're a soul with a personality as if you've ever had a pet, you know, um, so they can communicate as well. So that is the large part of my work now is doing um, both one-on-one mediumship readings for people to help them connect and communicate with their loved ones in the spirit world, as well as group readings, which is like larger events of many people, um, where I'm working with many spirit people and finding the people in the audience that they go to, giving details and messages from their loved ones on the other side. Uh, And I also do some teaching and intuitive coaching. So if you want to learn more about what I do and how to get in touch with me, you can definitely check out my website, joyfulmedium.com. I do offer a free monthly community healing. And if you get on my VIP insiders list, I do have a free three-day signs workshop, like a self-guided workshop that you can take. It's a it's these three mini sessions to teach you how to get signs um, in numbers, like how to use numbers as signs, how to get signs from your loved ones in the spirit world, and how to get signs just from the universe. So it's really like 
the basic what you need to know about getting signed. So you can sign up for that VIP Insider's email list on my website, joyfulmedium.com. But I'm so grateful that you're here with me, that you are going to be joining me for this podcast. Uh, and I'm excited to get into really diving into the topics around mediumship, psychic work, mysticism, all of the things that entails, right? Guides and angels and working with healing in many different ways, as well as talking to uh, other mystics and mediums and spiritual luminaries who have a light to shine and a message to share. So join me now and going forward for the Spirit Speakeasy podcast. I'm so excited to be doing this with you all, and I really happy to be here. So that is a little bit about me. Um, you know, of course, there's more that will come out in my story over time. I didn't always know that I was a medium. You know, that's the most common question I get asked is, did you always know that you had these gifts? And the answer is no. Um, I actually was quite terrified of all of this stuff just because of scary movies and those kind of things. Um, but now looking back, now that I have training and really understand to a deep degree how to use these gifts, I can see where it always was in my life. I can see you know, that when I was very young and would be, um, I went to Catholic school, like a lot of Italian girls from Boston, uh, I would be in, in the church services for school and I would feel those spirit tingles or angel tingles move through my body. I could feel the energy building in that space when we did song or prayer or, you know, that kind of a thing. I could see auras and colors around people giving spiritual addresses or inspirational talks. That's always been a part of me. I just didn't know it was weird, I guess, or I never really thought about it. Um, I always thought being psychic was about having these big visions that predict the future. And I've learned it's not. It's a very subtle sensing. And really, psychic work is more about helping us live our best life right now and make choices that are most in alignment with our best and highest good or, you know, highest expression of our soul in this lifetime, if you will, or our true best path, for example, um, rather than predicting the future, just helping us understand our choices and making choices that are going to produce the best results for our life that we want. That's really what the psychic works about. So I just was confused about what it was like most of us are. And mediumship, I really was confused about that too. I, I kind of would joke with the spirit world even early on. I, I kind of joke about it now still and say like, nobody be showing up in my room at night in like white robes and saying, ooh, scary. Like, don't do that because I will shut this mediumship down so quick you won't know what happened. It's not like that at all, you guys. It is so subtle. It really is just as a medium using this subtle sensing to understand um, emotions, usually from the spirit people. That's really the way that they communicate with us, because no matter the human condition, right, no matter our life experiences, our family of origin, the city we grew up in, our income level, the one thing we all have in common is the spectrum of human emotions. Regardless of how it plays out in your life, in your personal experiences, you still have this full spectrum spectrum of human emotions, just like everyone else. And once we cross over to the spirit world, you know, those loved ones that have already crossed over, they are still able to communicate and connect to us through the love that we shared, through the emotions that we had together. And often when they're coming for communication, like in a reading, for example, um, they're coming to let you know that they're safe, that they're at peace, uh, sometimes needing to just clear up some details about questions you might have. Sometimes they're letting you know how they spend time with you in your current life and letting you know details about things happening since their passing sometimes so that you know, oh wait, they're still around and still understanding what's going on in my life. It's one of the incredible things about mediumship and there are so many incredible things about it. So that's why I'm just so excited during this podcast, you know, during our times together to really be able to kind of take you into my world, right? Give you this insider's perspective as I chat insider style with all of these profoundly gifted souls that we're going to have on this podcast. So that is a little bit about me. Uh, I hope that you will stick around because this is going to be just something like nothing else is what I want to say. So if you got more questions about my gifts or how they work, I'm happy to share them. Um, I'm really excited to get into talks with, like I said, other mediums and mystics and spiritual luminaries. And I'm excited to do some solo episodes for you, either 
giving you uh, kind of a seat at the table in some of my one-on-one readings where you can see how does a mediumship reading really work? What type of information can come forward? It's different every session, but getting to sit in on some one-on-one readings, I think will be really exciting for you guys, those of them that have never done it. Um, and I, there might be a way for me to do a couple group readings on podcast, which we'll see, but I really want to be pushing the limits and seeing what can we do with this. And some of these solo episodes will just be kind of real talk chats between you and I, where I'll give you tips and tricks for your own, um, intuitive sensing for your own emotional processing to move through blocks and to really just help you with the sensitivities within yourself and how to best use them in your own life. So some interview, some solo episodes with just you and I hanging out, but either way, lots of depth, juicy stories. And of course, I want to laugh a lot. So I'm grateful that you're here. Welcome to your seat at the table. And I'm excited to continue on this podcast journey with you. So thanks for hanging out with me in the Spirit Speakeasy. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. Uh, Big hugs. And bye for now.